I made a reference to this, Jack, to some of the churches that kind of look at some sort of a socialist utopia here on earth and call it the kingdom of God. Or we can take that another step further and just say that some of the uh, Dominion Kingdom Now folks, and I want to spend a minute on this because not only do you tackle the issues of the end times uh, when we get to the topic of Kingdom Now or Dominionism, that goes into the area of the false teachings, yeah. and you do that brilliantly as well. But we've got some, and they're heavily new apostolic reformation folks who are, they're talking about the end times, but they've got it so twisted. Yeah. And we've got Christian dominionists. Let me just, for the audience sake, let me explain what that is. Then let me play a quick sound bite of someone who's talking kind of strange, but we'll try to sort it out. Christian dominionism basically is that the church is going to make the world perfect, which of course, you know, you and I would know that right. would take 10, 10 million years. And it's taken from Genesis 1, 26 through 28, the dominion mandate, and all nations will be Christianized. Mm. And and the Bible says that the earth will, as you and I teach, Jack, the earth will continue to hurtle towards problems that are unsolvable, the distress with right. perplexity, and then Jesus' return solves some of that, at least in the millennium. Let me right. play a quick soundbite here and get your response. It's a very brief soundbite. It's from the New Apostolic Reformation. It's Cindy Jacobs, and she's stating here that the Lord's Prayer is all about how to transform a nation. And when we finish with this soundbite, I'd like your response. Matthew 6 beginning with verse 9 is something we know as the Lord's Prayer but actually we could call this the disciples prayer and God showed me that this was a prayer and every part of the prayer is an element on how to reform and transform a nation and this is the reformers prayer this is the prayer of intercession that will help bring into manifestation the original Genesis mandate to fill, subdue, multiply, and have dominion in the earth. Genesis 1.28. This was our commission in the garden, and it never changed. Because we didn't understand our commission, sin came into the world, and it began to deteriorate the ability that we had to steward the earth. Now, in the garden, there were certain systems that were corrupted. One, the economic system. No longer did the earth produce. The curse came. And so we see that in the earth, there were corrupted systems that are full of sin, produce greed and mammon. So we have authority to reverse that Genesis curse of poverty and death. Not only do we have the power to do so, we have the mandate. You have to understand that. Again, Jack, this is mm. Cindy Jacobs, New Apostolic Reformation. And folks, when you hear New Apostolic Reformation, be really cautious. Yep. So many of those folks are just downright false teachers. But my perspective, Jack, is that the dominion mandate doesn't refer to dominion over humanity. Help us understand what's wrong with all this. Well, first of all, this is false teaching. In fact, if you caught what she was saying, and the premise for her doctrinal understanding was she said that what happened was before the fall, we, I'm assuming mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, did not understand their mission. So she's assuming that Adam and Eve were somehow deficient in their perfection. They were somehow ignorant in their having been created perfect. That's why they messed things up. Listen, this is false teaching. And the Bible tells us that it's not only going to be bad tomorrow, it's going to get worse. Now, should we stand for righteousness? righteousness? Absolutely. As a believer, should we do the right thing? Yes. Uh, should we vote rightly? Should we make our voice heard? Certainly. But the Bible teaches clearly that the days of deception will come. Jesus said that because the love of many will grow cold, there's going to be a rampant explosion of violence in the earth, i.e. the advent of the Antichrist, signs and wonders that would deceive, if possible, even the very elect. We're, we're going to see earthquakes and perilous times, men's hearts failing them for fear. That's what the Bible says. And I don't want to paint a picture of despair. The opposite. The Bible makes it very clear. The church is not going to usher in some kingdom on earth. That's why there's a millennium. That's, That's right. why Christ returns. He establishes that. And because he does, we get to rule and reign with him. We don't set up a system that makes it clean enough and the streets swept pure enough to then bring him back. That is false doctrine. It's been around for ages, and it is a absolute twisting of the eschatological doctrines of the Bible, Jan. It's just flat out wrong. Well, I have heard some of your messages, particularly on 
online. That's primarily where I catch your various teachings. And you've talked on this program and our conferences before on the Days of Deception, D-A-Z-E, Days of Deception. And you cite some of the following things as really troubling. Now, we've just kind of tried to briefly touch on this dominionist mandate to go and make the world perfect, the church, that is. Yeah. But you also talk about some of the big problems today, easy believism, the cry for unity, and we were talking about that before the program began, the fact that truth is being sacrificed on the altar of unity. You talk about the deception of tolerance. Explain how that fits into today's deception. Well, we've got these words that once had a meaning uh, by those early, for example, our colonial founders. It was Noah Webster who gave the definition to us regarding tolerance. It's a beautiful definition. People ought to read it again, and here's one of the reasons why. It's the exact opposite of what we hear today. Tolerance today is, let's just all get along as long as none of you Christians open your mouth. Let's tolerate as long as you tolerate me, but I don't have to tolerate you. We just saw recently in the spring of this year, Bruce Jenner announcing himself as, I forget his name. To me, Bruce Jenner will always be (laughs) Bruce Jenner because I had the weedy box that he lived on and I watched him in the Olympics. He's Bruce Jenner. But President Obama said, you know, we need to celebrate his courage. Well, I'm wondering in this age of redefining words and a culture that is in decay, would President Obama celebrate the fact that I believe Jesus Christ no. is the way, the truth, and the life? Not at all. Absolutely not. We are seeing exactly what God promised. And again, this is to encourage us. Evil will be called good. Good will be called evil. And we're living at that time. And please, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Your audience is educated. They tune in, Jan, because they want to know. But I tell you what, all of us need to go out, inform our friends and our family. They don't want to know these things. And yet God said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. We have got to get the truth out in love. Listen, homosexuality is a sin. So is adultery. So is fornication. And so is pride. It's all a sin. But we can't say, well, you know, cheating on your wife's a sin, but we should be tolerant toward the homosexual. No, you know what? If we love the homosexual, we need to tell them that homosexual sin is just as bad as robbing a bank. We both need Jesus. And we are being beaten down out of fear. Oh, we just need to be tolerant. We we ought not to speak up and say anything. I believe, Jan, behind the scenes, it's the deception of the enemy to silence the church. And he's using talking points to silence the timid uh, believer. We need to be filled with the Spirit and speak the truth in love. In 